Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to review for you this little guy. This is the Quiet Carry Knives IQ. Um, first off, I want to thank my buddy Chris for sending this along. It's a very, very interesting little piece, and I, 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 I yeah, I, I would have missed this one entirely. My buddy Chris said, hey, Nick, I got something for you. I think you're going to like it. And indeed, he was right. Um, so thank you very much for that. Next thing, size comparison. Not a very large knife here. Comes in, uh, here it is next to the Spydeco Delica. You can see it's got a little bit more cutting edge than Delica, but it's about the same sort of size vicinity. Uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. So again, very similar in terms of amount of cutting edge. Uh, rat number one here and uh, what the heck, Benchmade 940. Uh, is the 940-2, but uh, nonetheless, you can see here, 940 is bigger, but, uh, you know, overall blade shape aesthetic, fairly similar. So, uh, there you go, and then finally, a note on Quiet Carry. Quiet Carry is an interesting company. I've reviewed a bunch of their stuff before. The uh, Strand, I, I got one that wasn't particularly well made, but I, I did very much like the, uh, oh, what was it, the Gambit? The, they've got a little tiny one that, that, that's pretty excellent. Um, I like the Quiet Carry West a lot. They've done a lot of stuff that's been, honestly, more good than bad and ugly, and they've got a great design aesthetic. So um, they're out there and they keep up in their game. And so it's a company that I, I'm very much watching, especially now. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular pocket knife here. So on the good side, first off, I gotta say, I like the blade a lot. Um, it is a unique shape. Um, it's not like completely unique. I mean, at some level it's flat, little belly. It's kind of a, a sheep's footy sort of thing, but it's also got this hint of reverse tanto going on there with the swedge and whatnot. It's got a reasonable grind. It's not the thinnest behind the edge ever, but you know what? It, it, it does okay. It's using very thin stock, which helps a lot. It's got a sharpening choil. There's a lot to love about this blade, um, and so I, I like the blade a lot. Next thing, the clip on this guy is very nicely done. It's got lots of ram here. It's got some nice springiness to it. Um, and, you know, it, it just, it fits under the pocket well. It's a good clip. No complaints with it whatsoever there. Um, so that's good. Next thing, the size of this guy is, to my mind, great. I mean, seriously, it is tiny. Um, not just in terms of the amount of blade, which is fine and good for a lot of places, makes it more legal, but in terms of carry, this thing is minuscule. I mean, seriously, here it is against a standard U.S. lighter. This is not much bigger and absolutely thinner than this lighter. That's impressive. Um, I, I like this size very much. It disappears in the pocket, and it is absolutely 100% going to be legal no matter where you're at because it's coming in at like 2.9 inches. No matter how angry the cop is with you, this is going to be under 3 inches, and that's a beautiful thing. So that's good. It is very lightweight as well. Weigh this guy up here, and despite it being a solid chunk of metal, um, he's still coming in at 2.2 ounces, which is going to be less than an ounce an inch, which is very nice. Um, it is super compact in the pocket, so it carries just like a dream. I mean, with this deep carry clip on here, with this very tiny, it's just, it's really, really well done for carry. On days where I had this in my pocket, I barely noticed I had it in my pocket, but then... Bam, I had a knife. That's great. And so I like this size and uh, shape overall. It is pretty well made as well. I, I gotta say, I'm liking the construction. Whoever did this did a very nice job of it. Um, and particularly in the disassembly, it was just like, wow, this is really, really clean. And I hope that whoever they did this with, uh, they'll be working with in the future and that that OEM will keep up this kind of quality. Because my understanding is that Quiet Carry is just like one guy. Uh, and so uh, that, they, that, that they'll continue doing that. Because um, I, I like that very much. This is well done. The actual on this guy is absolutely great. It flips 100% reliably. Just like, bam, it's out there. The detent is really well done. It shuts very easily. It's not like a super drop shutty sort of thing. I mean, you can drop it shut, but it's got that kind of resistance that's pretty easy to work with because you can just like, bam, you're shut. Case closed. Um, and so the action on this guy is absolutely great. Um, it also has some very nice details to it. It's got a clip mounted lanyard hole, which is nice, which is also the hole for the screw, by the way has this great backspacer in the back here. It's a little thing, but it's it's just, it works well there. There's a lock bar access cut out here. There's the lock bar in, so the rock bar relief, that is, is uh, internal, so it doesn't break up the lines. You have an over-travel stop with a steel lock bar insert. Well done. You have enough handle here to be to be safe. It's not the case that this will cut you when it's closed. Even though the, the, it's a relatively thin knife, they've done a better job than, like, the Boca Quake in there did that. Um, and, you know, it's got this nice swedge. I mean, overall, there were great details on this. This is a really 
well thought out design. You can tell that whoever designed this guy is really, and it, well, Quiet Carry, is really, really thinking about all the little details. And I love that. So that's great to me. Um, and so those are the, the good things is that it, they have got great details here, a great action. It's well made, uh, super compact in the pocket, very lightweight, a great size, nice clip, and a nice blade. On the great side to me, I love the design aesthetic here 100%. Quiet Carry has just an incredible aesthetic sense. Um, they, 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 their designer, which I gather is the only person who works there, has a really, really freaking great uh, sense of this overall. They, they they do good work. They they make these just beautiful, and they all look consistent. Quiet Carry is one of relatively few makers out there in the knife world that uses sort of a very, very consistent style. Um, like, you can always tell a Quiet Carry, partly because they've got their little four-dot motif, which I, I like very much, but partly just because the, the overall designs, they're very kind of minimalist, but designed. They're, 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 I just, I'm a big fan of the aesthetic. The West was beautiful. This is beautiful. This is just a beautiful design knife, and it's an intelligently designed one, too. So uh, whoever the designer is over there should be very, very proud that they've made something that is not only very pretty and very consistent with their other work, but very, very effectively done. So that's what's great to me is the design here is just really high-end. On the bad side, there are some sharp, unchamfered edges, frankly, everywhere. In fact, the majority of my bad things involve chamfering. But, like, this needs to be chamfered a little bit here. It's a little too sharp, because, let's face it, you're not using this with a fire steel. Um, similarly, the um, flipper tab needs chamfering on the side of it. That is kind of why my one frustration carrying this is that it has a, a bit of a pocket packer here, but more specifically, it's got very sharp quarters. Now, look, I know the stock is not very thick here, and every bit of chamfering reduces tab, but I'd almost have preferred a better chamfered, slightly bigger tab or something like that, um, because, yeah, that's that's a thing. Um, speaking of chamfers, there is a flat indent for the clip here. It's maybe going to be hard to show off on camera, but there you go. I think you can see it under there. The problem is those edges are unchamfered, and those grab at your pocket a little bit more than I'd like to see. I, I like the idea of having a flat portion for the clip there, but I would have rather those have been, that had been done as like a continuous sort of wave out rather than a Sharp edge in, sharp edge out, sort of trapezoidal affair. Not a big deal, but it's something they can work on in the future. Next thing, the one issue with this knife ergonomically is that the clip is definitely a hot spot. You've got these very sharp corners, although they are chamfered, but you've got these sharp corners on the edges here. I would have almost preferred that the clip be made a little less deep carry, but be rounded so you can really fit better in the hand. It's not a huge deal, but it is definitely less ergonomic than it would have been without that clip. Not a big, big deal, though. Um, the, the flipper on this guy, getting to bigger deals, is a little position sensitive, meaning that if you have your finger resting on the lock bar, the detent is just going to be too strong to flip. Well, okay, I guess I pulled it off that time. But there have been a couple of times where I've grabbed this wrong and been unable to flip it because I was putting too much pressure on this. You want to make sure that your fingers are off of this as you're doing the flip because then it'll flip beautifully. Then finally, on the bad side, VG-10 is the steel here. Now, look, VG-10's a fine steel. It's good to go, I, I, I guess. But it's either barely adequate or barely inadequate. I'm not sure which. And at 160 bucks, it's probably the least inspiring thing about this knife. If this were an S35VN or M390, even for a bigger price, if this were like M390 at 180 bucks, I would be way more enthusiastic about it. But mind you, I'm a steel snob. VG-10 works fine. And I've recommended the Delica and VG-10 for many, many years. But I'm just getting tired of VG-10 at higher prices, and this is indeed VG-10 at a higher price. So, um, to me, that's the bad here, is that VG-10 is the one thing that makes this feel a little bit pricey or a little bit off um, at its price, which is 160 bucks, which I think is otherwise justified, frankly. Um, it has a, a flipper that's sensitive to lock bar pressure. Um, the clip is a bit of a hot spot in the back here. The flat indent for the clip needs some chamfers. This needs some chamfers. Flip it tab. A little chamfering here. Uh, just a visit from the chamfering fairy would do this guy a lot of good. So um, that's that's the bad. On the ugly front, honestly, there's nothing particularly ugly here. I like this knife a lot. So we can just go into the final version, uh, final uh, conclusion here, which is that honestly, this is a shockingly good knife. I mean, look, I knew who Quiet Carry was. I know that they've done some good work in the past, but holy crap. This knife kind of just, like, shocked me. It blew me away. It was kind of an, okay, hold on, everybody, stop. Look at what they just did. Knife. This, like, is a knife that I think secures the quiet carry designer. It's just like, you are a good knife designer. You have good things to say. 
I want to subscribe to your newsletter thing. Um, it has this great blade, this great clip, great action, great build, great details, and the excellent kind of design aesthetic that Quiet Carry has been bringing to the table here. Absolutely. Sure, it needs some chamfering. The clip could use a little rounding, and the detent is right on the edge of too strong if you've got any finger pressure on there. And you know what? It is VG10 for 160 bucks, which to me at least is on the bottom edge of acceptable, and it is probably why I'm not going to, well, is definitely why I'm not going to pick one of these guys up for myself, but honestly, my my final feelings on this knife are resoundingly positive. This was one of the biggest positive surprises I've had in a while on the table. I kind of figured this is going to be like, okay, it's going to be fine. It's going to need some work, but it'll be okay, I guess. But no, this is really good. It doesn't have any problems that tiny tweaks uh, to the geometry and a step up in steel can't solve. I mean, sure, there are really nice options at 160 bucks. Things like the ZT450, the Benchmade 940s, well, actually, it's 20 bucks more. And there, there are a bunch of other great knives that you can get in this price range. But the thing is, I feel like this is bringing a nice design to the table, and it's doing something that's pretty unique. Um, both in its overall size, which is absolutely tiny and compact, and just its overall aesthetic presentation. I really do love the way this knife looks, and that probably affects my review. But as a result uh, of all of these positive things, I think that this knife is without question a because it's one of those reviews I love doing uh, where I wasn't expecting much like boom bazam there you go um and so it means uh, you know not only that this is a knife that I do recommend particularly if you if you like the aesthetic and you don't mind the VG10 but it also means that whatever they're doing next I'm interested in it um and particularly if they up the steel game a little bit holy crap are these guys going to be a, a force to watch but as it stands this is absolutely great it's an easy recommendation if you like the look you like the size you don't mind the steel then you don't need a high IQ to realize that this is going to be a great choice for you. So there you go. Hope this is interesting to you and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.